All right, so, you know, we're going to move over to the pros, the NFL. And we're going to talk about, you know, what's been going on with some of these quarterback decisions. If you remember, like, a, probably a little bit over a month ago, um, we talked about the battles that was going on in a couple of these organizations. Now we got some clear-cut definition. Um, and, and it don't look like he's taking the, the reins in Chicago. Um, you know, you know, Jay's team look like they're going with Teddy Two Glo I mean, Teddy Bridgewater over Drew Lock. Drew Lock. Urban Meyer announced that uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the starter in Jacksonville. Also, you know, we still got four teams that are trying to figure it out. I'm going to say three because I think James Winston is going to be the starter for the Saints. But we got the Saints, Patriots, 49ers, Eagles. So, Jay, I pose this question to you. With the... Out of the, the four teams that's undecided, which team you think, <laughs> no matter who is their starter, it doesn't matter. They going to stink anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was totally caught off guard by that question, too. I thought I was hey, going to the, I thought I was gonna get into the three dudes at the top. Immediately. Nah. I, I, guess I, I guess I could, but, God, we'll get the – I guess we'll get the clown show out the way early. Philly – and I don't even think Philly's like a serious like quarterback thing, but you know, I guess you've been like on the ground, so to speak, with the Eagles fans, you know, <laughs> hearing, hearing the, you know, the the chatter of the birds and all that. So that but it did don't matter. And I'm I think I've said this previously. Eagles are gonna be terrible. I don't regardless. I, I think it's a bad situation. You know, I think you get the coach in there, you know, Sirianni or whatever, and he says before the season starts and well, before Carson Wentz gets traded, he's like, man, I think we got two great quarterbacks in here. And I'm like, hey, I don't know if you've like been watching or where you came from. You know, I don't know if you were at, I don't know if you were, at, you know, sitting on top of Mount Rushmore and the signal wasn't good or something, but I don't, they look at, they was looking kind of bad last year. Like that was Carson Wentz's worst season. I know Jalen Hurts came in and he, he showed some flashes. But this team is just like they kind of like breaking down, you know, like that Super Bowl that they won uh, seemed like ages ago. Doug Peterson, like we thought he was a genius or something last year. He couldn't he didn't look like he could figure anything out. It looked like Frank Reich was the brains behind the operation. Now, everybody's like they got too many like old guys, you know, they're veterans like you know, Jason Kelsey, Zach Ertz, Fletcher Cox, all their good players seem to be like aging. And I don't think they've done the best job reloading. So I think they're going to have you know, significant problems, even though they play in like the worst division in football. But I think they're going to be the doormats over there. I, I really do. No matter who starts a quarterback, whether it's Jalen Hurts or Joe Flacco. And I feel bad about that because I'd like to see Jalen Hurts succeed. I think he's a good, I think he's a good, uh, he's a good young man. I'd love to see him succeed. But outside, you know, to these other to these other things, I don't think um, I don't think that the Saints. I agree with you. I think it's going to be Jameis Winston. I think uh, I watched a little bit Monday. I think you did as well. He looked way more solid than Taysom Hill, and it goes back to that point I've made before. Like, if you start Taysom Hill at quarterback, and you're going to lose all that great stuff that Taysom Hill does because he's Taysom Hill. He can catch passes. He can run with the football. He can block for you. He can do all these different things. Special teams. So if you start him at quarterback, I mean, it's not like, hey, Jameis, could you go in there and like, you want to like uh, be on the uh, punt punt return team or like, you know, do something else? You can't do that. So, but I think and Jameis Winston, he's a pure quarterback. So I think you leave Taysom Hill in his role, his, uh, you know, Swiss Army knife role, and you just roll with that. And, uh, you know, we'll get, I'm not going to spoil the New England. We'll get, we're going to get into that in a little bit later. Um, 49ers, I guess, is the one I, I'm most unsure of. Um, I, I, I'm definitely leaning. Like, I'd go Jimmy Garoppolo, just let him start, see how it goes. Trey Lance, you know, North Dakota State, maybe you need to – I think he's regarded maybe as a guy who's a little bit more raw than some of these other quarterbacks. So, I don't – and Jimmy Garoppolo, he's a proven NFL starter. I know he's got durability issues. But I'd go out there and roll with Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, if he, uh, if he lights it up for you, you can maybe look at trading him on the deadline. Obviously, you think Trey Lance is the future or you wouldn't have drafted him number three overall. So – I think you roll with the veteran guy. I think San Francisco got a chance to win a lot of games. I mean, they still got a lot of talent and some good, really good defensive players. So I'd roll with that. But as far as, you know, the guys that have been named starters recently, I got I got to tell you, this whole Jacksonville thing where Urban Meyer, like, I don't know what he's doing. Like, if he thinks he's being cute or something. Like, yeah, we got the, got the old quarterback competition between the number 
one wonder kid, best thing you've ever seen, you know, since Peyton Manning or John Elway, and you know, he uses Pantene Pro V and his hair and all this other thing, Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Gotta get all the foolishness, the superlatives out before <laughs> saying the dude's <laughs> name. Probably shouldn't even say it. And uh, against uh Mr. Uh, tour bus in the summer, short jeans shorter than your girl, and all this crap. Gardner Minshew, you know what I'm saying? So, what? Uh, that's oh no! Oh no! Wait a minute! Wait, hold on! Say it! Say that again! Oh, what? I'm not running that back. Our host <laughs> can feel you in on that. Oh no! But much as like you thought that comment was ridiculous, this whole this whole idea that this was a legitimate quarterback. Uh, competition is ridiculous. We know you don't draft a dude first overall to sit behind some uh, six round pick from two years ago who, you know, kind of looks like he do something, but he's more famous for his mustache than actually what he do on game day. Yeah. So I think that's just been completely foolish. We knew it was going to be Trevor Lawrence. And this whole idea that, you know, where you hear some ESPN analysts. I don't know who it was, or Lobsky, or maybe it was somebody, one of these other dudes, but they come on there and they'll talk about, well, you know, actually, I think it would be smart to sit Trevor Lawrence because, you know, the offensive line isn't good, so he's going to get beat up, might get hurt and all this. I don't care. The dude got drafted number one overall. Get on in there. The only reason you could, like, sell me on saying that is if you had a legitimate option who gave you a better chance to win, I don't know, maybe like the 49ers, which I just told you. They don't have that. They got uh, Gardner Minshew, so miss me with that. As far as the other ones, I'm, I'm not loving. I'm not loving Andy Dalton starting for the Bears. That seems kind of seems kind of safe and just kind of boring. Like, really, you got you got rid of Mitchell Trubisky, Trubisky, and now you want Andy Dalton to start. I don't love that. I mean, maybe it could be if it's just one of those things where, like, well, Justin Fields, he's not ready. Maybe that's it. So we're just gonna go with Andy Dalton for now. Now, I guess I, I guess I can be okay with that, but I don't I don't love it. I and I think at some point this season, I you know I think it'll be maybe a month, maybe I think at most Andy Dalton starts four games. He's gonna have one or two in there where he's not very good. They gonna start listening to the fans. They are gonna be out there booing because they are gonna have fans in the stands this year. They might be you might not be able to hear them as well because they might might have stuff over over their face. But um they're gonna they're gonna hear it from the crowd and Justin Fields he'll be in there at some point. And as far as Denver, I, I really don't like making this about myself and the team that I root for. But I, I you know, this is probably the one I guess I'm <laughs> most okay with, even though I don't love it. Um, I kind of laid this out for you uh, before the show. I, I, I like going with the, I would go with Drew Locke. I'd give him a pretty short leash, but you kind of, te- we know what Teddy Bridgewater is. You know, he's gonna come in here, manage the game. He's not gonna make big mis- mistakes. Uh, but he's kind of he's kind of reached his ceiling, so to speak. Drew Locke is a pretty talented guy. He's shown some really good flashes. wasn't wasn't good last year, but he's also dealt with some injuries. I would I would trot him out there, see what he can do for you. But uh, you know, if he's not cutting it after you know three or four games and he just can't take care of the ball, well, you got the safety net, you know, sitting on the sideline. Teddy Bridgewater, he can come in and stabilize you. But now you do it this way. I, I'm not sure. Like if you go with Teddy Bridgewater. I don't know what that does to the young kids, you know, uh, middle makeup. So if they, they went this way, I think Vic Fangio's left himself, you know, kind of, I don't, I feel less comfortable now. If Teddy Bridgewater somehow ain't playing well, I don't know if I want to go to Drew Locke because it also says, like you say, what does that say about Drew Locke that he couldn't be that Teddy Bridgewater in a competition? From what I've seen in the preseason, they both look pretty good. Um, Drew Locke started the first game. Teddy Bridgewater started the second game. They both played pretty well. Bridgewater probably played a little bit better, but um, that's the one. I, I mean, I don't love that one either, but that's probably the one I guess I'm most positive about, whether than this Andy Dalton thing and this fake fake quarterback competition they had in Jacksonville. Hey, so off the rip, out the gate, I'm telling you right now, I agree with your assessment of the Eagles. Hey, that whole team is going to that little prison that they got under the stadium because they going to suck. They going to be garbage. Um, so no need to beat that dead horse because it is a dead horse, folks. Um, now, it's a, dead, it's a, dead going a, <laughs> a dead eagle that, that simulates a horse, I guess. Um, <laughs> Andy Dalton, I'm with you here. Um, you know, I, I floated an ideal, and the more I think about it, like I think I agree. 
Um, like I, I floated the the idea of, hey man, throw both of them out there in week one and see what you got. But like you said, what if you see what you got? Ain't you didn't really answer the question that week one did what you do right? <laughs> um, so I, I agree with that. So you know, all right, boom. If if they're both neck and neck, you go with the guy that had done it before. You know, listen, the guy Justin Fields is a rookie, so I I get it. All right, cool. You want you wanna. You know, go with Andy Dalton. It's fine. You know why it's fine? Because I know Justin Fields over there looking like, yo, yo, this dude, yeah. like, stop playing with me. Like, uh, this dude ain't done nothing since TCU. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna be in the starting lineup sooner or later. Um, the Red Rifle. <laughs> yeah, all right. And then you know, going down at the Jacksonville. Um, here's the deal. Like, like you said, let's. I. I don't know, man. This this love affair with Trevor Lawrence. Like, hey, man, go get your paper. Do do what you gotta do. Um, just just you you rolled it up quite nice. Um, he you know best prospect since John Elway. Oh, the the second coming of Andrew Luck before the retirement and all this other stuff that they had to say. Uh, I, I I'm not seeing it. I I don't know. Listen. Somebody gonna have to roll that beautiful bean footage of him in high school and let me see something because I I'm sorry his Clemson career was average his career wasn't better than Tools if and that's the player he gets compared to the most because you know Tool was one year ahead but that's the player he gets compared to I don't think his career was better than Tools and I. I don't even hit me with the well. Tua had more weapons. Oh yeah, because Clemson was just out here looking like uh, NC State, right? Yeah, they roster was looking terrible, right? Come on, man. Yeah, I've, I, I've I, never heard. I've never heard of T. Higgins or Justin Ross or any of these fellas. Yeah. Oh man, Travis Etienne. Who? <laughs> like, uh, oh man, and don't don't even get me started on that. The one of the greatest defensive lines in college football history. So, um, with with all that said, like. I don't know, man. I mean, the the rubber's going to meet the road. He's number one pick. He's going to have to play. And I think reality is going to hit him pretty fast. You know, I don't wish any bad, you know, ill will on a young guy. I mean, you know, go out there and do your thing. But I just think, man, he gets a lot of pressure applied to him. And now it's time for him to live up to it. And and maybe, maybe one time in his life, maybe if somebody just tell him, Yo, you're not up to snuff. Hey, Miss you. Get in there with your mustache. Let, show them how it's done in a, in a pro game, a real pro game. Oof. You know? And, and just and I'm not saying it got to last forever. But man, so maybe somebody should just tell Trevor Lawrence no one time in his life. And stop hyping every doggone thing he do. But that's neither here nor there. Going over to the Broncos, like you said, um... You know, I, my number one thing is this. You know, like you said, it made sense to start Drew Locke and then bring in Bridgewater. But I'm like, what in the hell was Bri- or what in the hell was Drew Locke doing in in, in training camp? C- clearly, he wasn't winning the job. So what what was he doing? Clearly, like I I, I got to know somebody got to show me the footage because I'm like, you got beat out by Bridgewater, and they didn't even want him in Carolina after they paid him. So I'm trying to figure out what could he have been doing so well that Drew Locke couldn't do. I mean, y'all got the same receivers. Y'all, y'all calling the same plays. I mean, he wear two gloves. You probably wear one. I don't know. But what, what is go, what's the problem, Drew Locke? This team was kind of built to be given to you. And you have yet to uh, take it. You have yet to accept it. So I, I don't know what that's about. Um, and then, and, and, and then to the other undecideds, listen, I, the Saints job ain't undecided to me. That's Jameis Winston. I, I don't know. Sean Payton, he trying to be cute and, you know, you know, stay loyal to his boy Taysom. But listen, go ahead and knock that off. Get Taysom Hill. Let him throw, run, catch, coach, whatever else he does. Let him do it all. But he's, he's done being the quarterback. Go ahead. You, you gave him his shot. We do we not. Do we not remember when Taysom Hill was the starting quarterback when Drew Brees was down? It ain't like he hasn't got his shot. You might have forgot about it because it wasn't so hot, but he got his shot. It's time to move on. Pack him up. The 49ers, um, I agree with you. Jimmy Garoppolo should definitely be the starter in week one. Listen, 
I, as much as I like to see the old once in the game hail mary from um, Trey Lance that, that somehow finds somebody's hands and he in the end zone, I like seeing that. But I, I just don't know if that's the recipe to win games right now. Um, so you, you go listen. What three years ago? Two, two, three years ago. The, Jimmy Garoppolo was in the Super Bowl. We do remember that, right? I mean, the guy did make it to the Super Bowl. Like, so I got it. He's hurt every other game. I know that's that's true. But listen, put put a little respect on his name. You know what I mean? Like he was in the Super Bowl. I got it. You know he he did. You know he did have some stolen valor over there with the New England Patriots. I got it. But at the end of the day, he was in the Super Bowl. So you know. Let the man start week one. Let him build up the real estate so he can get traded somewhere. Because that's what looks like is going to happen is, he, you know, if he play well enough, somebody will acquire about him and they'll get him on out of there for a fifth-round pick. So it is what it is. Now, with, with all that said, right, with all that said, um, now that I got that off the chest, right, <laughs> I, I got a question. Do you think Trevor? Do you think Trevor Lawrence could play bad enough that Gardner Minshew do come in to be starting for Jacksonville? I guess. I mean, I guess he could. I mean, and clearly, like, I guess if you believe Urban Meyer, like, I, I don't know what's going on. I guess, like, I think there's always, in a, in most cases, like, unless, like, I guess seventy five percent of quarterback positions, who if you're not Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or guys like that. You know Russell Wilson like I don't think those guys could ever like lose their jobs unless they like just were terrible for the entire year or something crazy happened but like for I guess for young guys like Trevor Lawrence I guess there is a scenario where he could play that badly but I mean you drafted I mean you drafted him number one overall so I mean it's kind of one of those things like you stuck with him right you know like you can't just like oh god he ain't cut it we gotta you, you gotta make it work that's and that's I guess why you have coaches and all that. So, and I guess also the other point, just to go back about the whole, uh, I think the the problem I have is not with Trevor Lawrence, who by all accounts seems like a great a great kid. I think the the whole the problem we have more than with him is just the whole like the hype train. Hype train, yeah. The hype train yeah. from right. you know the media, which just has put him on this pedestal, and. You know, ho- hopefully he's got. Hopefully he can live up to it because if not, right. I think it's going to be somewhat disappointing. And it does. Right. And I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I think we've kind of seen eye to eye on this for a while. And it just—it's a very simple point. He played in a football machine in Clemson, and not in like the same can be said for like Alabama quarterbacks, you know, and Ohio State. You know, there's there's program, okay. there's different yeah. programs to where. You have it. You you got it a little bit easier in college, you know, just because like you got all the talent with you based on like who can recruit the best player. There's a huge difference between Clemson and Jacksonville, and it almost the preseason game Monday night. It reminded me in a way of the uh, you know college football playoff semifinal game against Ohio State last year when Ohio State's front you know uh, defensive line dominated Clemson's offensive line. And that's what it looked like New Orleans, the New Orleans Saints were doing to Jacksonville's offensive line. I know they were missing, you know, a couple starters up there, but uh, that's where it all starts. If you can't block them up, any quarterback's going to be in trouble. 